Hey dad, I've been recording these chapters from the book on healing that I wrote. And this chapter is called According to Your Faith. Matthew 9, 28 through 29 in the New King James Version says, And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. Matthew 9, 20 through 22. And behold, a woman, which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may, be, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Matthew 8, 5 through 10. And when Jesus was entered in Capernaum, or Capernaum, I can't, um, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should comest under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers unto me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth. And to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Luke eight forty one through 42 and verses 59 through 55. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house, for he, only, for he had only one daughter, one only daughter, about twelve years of age, and she lay a-dying. But as he went, people thronged him. While he yet spake, there came there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble, trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered or allowed no man to go in, save Peter and James and John, and the father and mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out, and took her by the hand, and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. Mark nine seventeen through 29 New King James Version. Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son, who has a mute spirit. And wherever it seizes him, it throws him to the throws him down, and he foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples, and they should cast it, that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. They brought him to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him and fell on the ground, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all... I think I duplicated this. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. When Jesus saw, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. And he became as one dead, so that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, he, Jesus, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Matthew fifteen, 
verses 21 through 28, New King James Version. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Acts chapter 3, verse 2 and verse 16. And a certain man, lame from his birth, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So they, he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered into the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Now as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to him in the porch which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us, as though by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, New King James Version. Then he, Jesus, went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things, and what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, son, the son of Mary, and brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. I have to pause there thinking that he said he couldn't do anything mighty, but even a few sick people still got healed, and that wasn't even considered mighty for Jesus. Healing healing sick people is just, you know, ordinary for Jesus. You know, I, thought, I think that's, uh, that's interesting. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit, teaching and again, this book was written, you know, addressed to Mom Ernestine, but anyone reading it can get the same message. So just as a reminder, that's why I say Mom. It says, Mom, I challenge you to read and reread the scriptures in this letter. In every case, there was no question of Jesus' ability to heal. The most important question that needed to be answered was, did the person who needed healing have the faith to be healed? In several of the scriptures, Jesus said, according to your faith, be it unto you. He didn't say according to my ability or according to the power I have now. Jesus had all the power of heaven at his disposal. The only limitation on that power was the faith of the person who wanted to be healed. Mom, you have to get this. The power that God used to create the earth, to part the Red Sea, to even raise Jesus from the dead is still available today. Romans chapter 8 verse 11, New King James Version says that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. You could want toast for breakfast, put the bread in the toaster, but if it's unplugged, you will never get toast. The electric current is steadily flowing through the wall with more than enough power to cook the toast, but until you plug in the toaster, you will never have toast. We plug into the healing power of God by faith, and then healing power flows to us. I'm going to say that again. We plug into the healing power of God by faith, and then healing power flows to us. An example, an excellent example of this principle is the woman with the issue of blood in Luke chapter 8. She touched Jesus' garment with faith to be healed, and healing power flowed into her body. 
Jesus wasn't even aware of what she was doing. We know that Jesus didn't know who touched him because he asked, who touched me? This seemed odd because Jesus was in a crowd with many touching him. But Jesus was acknowledging that someone was touching him with a special touch, a touch combined with the faith to be healed. Jesus confirms this by saying, virtue or power has gone out of me, and then by telling the woman that her faith had made her whole. The healing power was there inside Jesus, but would never have been released unless the woman had the faith and then took accompanying faith steps or actions. Your faith action may might be as simple as praying in faith. But healing will not come without faith. If God just rained down healing on every sick person, there would be no faith required. People who don't know God point to this all the time as proof that God is not good. It sounds like this. How can God allow all these people to suffer? The answer to this question is similar to the question, why does a good God send people to hell? As Christians, we know that God already sent Jesus as the way to escape hell. Anyone can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. Call on the Lord and be saved. Romans 10, 13. Salvation requires faith in the Bible truth that Jesus was crucified, died, and was buried, and rose on the third day, and that his death paid for our sins, and that through belief in him we have eternal life. Similarly, escape from the suffering of any sickness or disease requires faith in the Bible truths about healing. Hebrews eleven six says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God requires that we believe in him, that we diligently seek him in faith. Then he rewards us with the answer to what we were seeking. Someone may say, I know someone who got healed and didn't pray. God just healed him, healed them. But we don't know who else may have prayed in faith for that person. God is not trying to keep healing from us. He's trying to get it to us. The only requirement is that we ask in faith. Our faith plugs us into the healing power of God that is there for all who believe.